It is indeed true that the core missions of this institution are twofold and have been from the very beginning is number one, do basic science at a world-class level, attract the best scientists to compete uh, with uh, the best scientists all over the world, and secondly, uh, to educate the next generation of scientists, especially through our graduate school. Nonetheless, it is very clear, and, and, and we have always had this, this conviction from the, from the very beginning of this institution, and that goes back to the very first development plan authored by, by Haim Harari, that whenever you bring together uh, a group of extremely bright people, some of the best scientists in the world, some exciting things will happen, and some of these exciting things will be of enormous benefit for society and also great, create great value for industry. What we are doing is something novel in, in Austria, and at least to the extent that I'm aware, there is no similar initiative of bringing together a public research, basic research um, institution and private investors. Internationally, this is not this is not particularly new. Came together in this partnership, which is now called IST Cube. Um, what is it actually? I mean, we're, we're, we're sort of, as Marcus said, just going to touch on the sort of fringes of what we offer. But essentially, it's, it's some of the points that, uh, that uh, uh, Thomas had uh, mentioned earlier. We've got the infrastructure that we have access to, both in terms of the park as well as the IST. Um, we've got uh, know-how in the team, which we'll introduce in just a second, and experience. Uh, and we've got capital that we can invest in, in any uh, young new startups or spin-outs that, um, that we find interesting. One important part in Austria is that uh, we can discuss this open for Europeans as well, that we have uh, some kind of gap in terms of investments within Austria um, that needs to be, needs to be filled. Um, especially for high-tech university startups. When you start with two people um, in a university setting, this goes only to a certain point um, until you have the prototype. Once you have the prototype and people become interested, then um, you cannot any longer use the university as an infra an environment to, to, to now uh, make a product. Um, there's no funding for that, uh, there are no capacities for that, you need additional people, you need additional infrastructure. I think it's excellent to have uh, a location where you can provide infrastructure, as mentioned Markus, that's one thing, so that could be office space, uh, simple as that, but also machines, high-tech machines, and obviously also the experience from all the experts. But then there is a second part, that's also the economic advice. We see too many companies that are being companies too early in their life cycle, right? right. They should be still grant funded, they should maybe right. even be still part of the university, um, and they shouldn't be out there raising equity. I like to, uh, so to say, transmit uh, to young entrepreneurs is have respect for other expertise. I mean, somebody who has an MBA, he can, if you are explaining him properly to him, quickly fetch a point, what is, so to say, the innovation you're slowly, driving at. Slowly, 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 slowly. <laughs> but also see here is something to you to offer which maybe you don't have. And I think you mentioned nicely talking to people who have either managerial background or they have ever developed a product or they have ever done business development or they are good in financing or what we also call, talking about Q, it's intelligent capital. These fellows that only invest the seed money or your A or B round, they also have a fantastic network. It doesn't typically matter much and I think many of the universities and many of the founders still have to learn this on what exactly the percentage in a pie, the size of which is unclear, really is. Right? I think the really critical part at the time is to make sure there is pie and eventually can get eaten. We didn't have enough money so we wanted to offer uh, to the web designer a company share. And, uh, <laughs> you know, we were thinking of like 5% like or 10%. And, and um, because we thought, well, I wasn't you know, talking about that. Without, without a website, we cannot, we cannot have uh, anything. So there's no pie with our website. But, like, from a later uh, perspective, uh, fortunately, we did not uh, give him 10% of the company. You know? <laughs> this is not an Austrian problem, it's a European problem that we don't have uh, enough public money for prototyping. I mean, and this is more de-risking for the seed investor. And I think this is a great dilemma. And I think we can only look into, hopefully not being ruined by its current president, the United States. Um, they have um, a lot of tools and instruments, public tools and instruments, that help 
take my industry to finance a proof of concept phase one or an early phase two trial. During product development and technology development, you go through the various stages. And to me, there's certainly one stage where such a cube, such an incubator, and a different funding structure than the one that we currently know is really the right thing to do. And this, to me, does not actually take away any opportunities for industry. Uh, on, it actually helps industry because, from my experience, we are offered products or technologies at a very, very early stage of development. And so, from my perspective, this may help to bridge this gap between basic research and the moment when, when the technology, when the product is actually mature enough for the industrial use. Now, what are the reasons why, 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 why we decided to, to invest in, in tech startups and B2B oriented young companies? Uh, we started from scratch and thought, what, what value can we bring to the scene? Um, so there's a, obviously there's a lot of cash around uh, in, a, in a zero interest uh, environment. Um, so we said, what we have is a great network to the industry um, and, and some tradition in Austria. And that's something young founders need. Um, so we try to, to connect them to the industry, to help them on the, on the side of sales. As was pointed out, industry partners bring in additional value that cannot be offered by an incubator. Like you mentioned, the, the, uh, the manufacturing plants that are needed. Uh, and on top, a, a commercial channel that can be opened through so industrial partner, which is, at the end of the day, real, real important for any success of a product. So I would say this is different players. This is, there's, there's different stages uh, for industrial partners uh, and, and such an incubator, so whatever. I think it's a, it's a, a great uh, opportunity for all of us to have such an such an institution. It is incredible how difficult and slow it is to actually start a company in this country. Um, I think we could have probably incorporated a UK Limited in the two hours that we've been up on this panel, um, uh, whereas here it's, it's a very slow and laborious process. And I think that, but that sort of then translates into what is it really all about. It's all about that creative destructive force that's very, very important when you're trying to create a technology ecosystem. We have to go even beyond Austria, it's just, just a little. I mean, you have to invest in London, in Munich, in wherever it happens, in Stockholm. And I guess, let's a little bit also get out of that silo mentality, I think. And let's learn from the mistakes of the past. So some of the great industry, like Siemens and Novartis, they were setting up exclusive venture funds, only investing in Novartis projects, spin -offs, or only investing in Siemens projects. But it's not the way to go. Benchmark by once in a while, also make a seat, let's say, out of another university somewhere where you feel this is strengthening also your expertise to invest. I sometimes have the feeling um, people think of the startup scene in Austria more in the, in the sense of TV shows, um, non-research startups, and um, I always regret that people like you who, who do um, deep tech research and, and basic research and really bring something to the table, so this is the critical part of the statement, that they aren't in the, um, like in the heart of, of, of the media focus. A great idea often happens in the blink of an eye. Well, then it takes a while to find out whether it's a good idea, actually. And this is only the beginning of a long process that requires a lot of hard work. Maybe even blood, sweat and tears, though hopefully not too many. But definitely dedication and perseverance. And still it all may lead nowhere. So then you have to start all over again and maybe again and again. What I'm trying to emphasize here is that it may take a lot of time to get from an idea to an application, a product, a sustainable business project. It takes endurance and patience, commitment and dedication, and above all, it will take time. 
I am very positive and optimistic that we have everything it takes to be successful. We also need to be lucky, there's no doubt about that, but what mainly lies ahead of us is a lot of work, so let's do it. To do all this work, it's of course necessary to eat something as well, so I want to thank you very much and the buffet is open, please.